But let's talk about the economic curve. This is what must be confronted. State and Territory leaders on Friday have to press go. Not a plan to press go, they have to press go on Friday. A million people are waiting on the sidelines wanting to go back to the jobs of which they used to have. We must get people back into jobs and we must get people back at work. Speaking to the National Press Club, Josh Frydenberg's speech in part a scene setter for a return to normalcy, revealing current restrictions are costing Australia $4 billion a week. For every additional week that these restrictions are in place, we lose the equivalent of to, of to what 4 million Australians on the median wage would earn in a week. But he also had a stark warning for those demanding Australia follow Sweden's lead in lifting most restrictions in order to keep its economy moving. Respectfully, I disagree. Sweden has 40% of Australia's population, but 70 times the death rate. So, Mark, we've talked about this a bit, about now the economic curve is more important than the health curve because that is the one that is of great danger. You can take it from every possible angle, from the people hanging on by a thread, by JobKeeper, by the people who have lost their jobs in those frightening numbers that we've presented here, the mental health stuff that we talked about with John Brogdon last night, that the number one reason that they are getting record calls at the moment isn't anxiety about the virus, it's anxiety about finances. So if Mark Latham could address the Federal Cabinet going into Friday, what would you tell those state and territory leaders about the economic curve and when's it time to get back to it? Well, the number one uh, issue uh, for social wellbeing, for health care, for prosperity facing the nation is the economy. And the faster we reopen the economy, the better off we'll be on all those fronts. And quite frankly, Paul, there is no return to normality. Uh, what we've seen here is governments collectively spending $300 billion dollars but the net outcome has been a 20% collapse in household spending and um, 1.5 million people losing their jobs, some of them unemployed, some of them not working, but uh, propped up by JobKeeper. And over 50% of the Australian workforce now is on the equivalent of welfare payments. This is an economic horror story, a sharp, vicious downturn, the like of which we've never seen, even during the time of the Great Depression. And the sad thing, the thing that worries me most about Australia's outlook is that we're not prepared for the economic policies and necessity to do something uh, overwhelmingly positive about it. Because for 13 years, the country and the political class have wasted their time on an issue, almost one issue, climate change, which is a job destroyer. Mm. And the only economic strategy that they've had in Canberra is pumping up the immigration numbers to artificially inflate GDP, even though on a per capita basis, We've already been in recession and we're not prepared. We're not pre prepared in terms of productivity, tax reform, uh, workplace relations, economic development, the planning system, the energy policies are a joke, um, plagued by the climate change curse. So on every front, we're underprepared for the task ahead. And what's government going to do? Well, government having spent the $300 billion, uh, there's no firepower left in the locker. Uh, if the economy needs ongoing fiscal support, uh, where can it come from? Uh, this is a bleak outlook, and the only way to turn that around is to get cracking with um, dramatic 180-degree policy changes on all the areas of listed as soon as possible. Absolutely. Rita, how do you convince Daniel Andrews, when he still has a ban on two people playing golf, that Friday is the day to start to reverse muscle memory, to start to understand that uh, of the 355,000 people who've lost their job in the first half year in Victoria, that those people need just as much hope as those that are working in and around the health system about not getting hospitalised flooded with COVID cases? Well, I'm hoping today's figures uh, provide that motivation. Victoria had the heaviest job losses in the country, 8.6% fall, and it is a grim state of affairs. And that doesn't even take into account the 5 million Australians who, according to the Prime Minister, are on JobKeeper. So though they're technically employed, they are being paid for by the taxpayer. They're, it's just going by their employer. And you wonder how many of those people remain employed come September when JobKeeper ends. So this is such a grim situation. 
economically and we really need to take fairly drastic action to get out of it with uh, minimal damage. Troy, what would you say again to an Anastasia Palaszczuk who even as early as today announcing a single digit number of cases, I think it's a singular case that is in, um, in intensive care, that the new urgency is somewhere else and the same way that there was an urgency about shutdown, there has to be an urgency about re-emergence. Yeah, well, the Prime Minister, I think, uh, generally has been very cautious um, and very focused about the health impact of uh, COVID-19, and he's asked people to download the COVID-19 app. He uh, wants to get that up uh, by probably a few more million uh, before he says we can start to relax uh, some of the restrictions that we've got in our economy and obviously the uh, the social restrictions that we're all dealing with as well. So, um, but I do think that uh, it is start it is time to start winding some of this back. Uh, but I think we need to maintain that principle of cautiousness. So um, let's see if we can start to reopen some restaurants and cafes where people can can uh, dine inside. Uh, with proper uh, distances between each other. Uh, let's see if we can encourage other businesses to start to reopen, even just the average kind of kind of workplace, to see whether they can start to stagger getting people back. Uh, I know schools in most states are starting to stagger getting students back. Uh, so we're going to have to go through a new phase, and I think we're almost there. Uh, but I do worry about the impact, uh, the longer-term impact on the economy. I mean, those... Those unemployment figures are horrendous and my heart does go out to people uh, that have lost their jobs. I, I can't imagine what an impact that would be. I'm lucky in my my own employment and, and my family's employment that we're, we're lucky we've still got a job. Uh, but uh, I also worry too, to pick up a point that Mark made, is where do we go next? Because we still have these supply constraints in the economy and also need to stimulate demand. Uh, but the idea that a business that's been shuttered for a month can simply just turn on a turn on again and start operating at full capacity is fantasy. Some of these businesses of will never come back, and it's hard to start a new business. Uh, so, what is the next phase of our economic transition going to be? Uh, the prime minister is talking a big game of collaborative economic reform. I hope he's right about that. Uh, but uh, but we don't have enough clarity about where we go next in terms of how we are actually going to kickstart our economy. And and I do hope politicians are beginning to focus on that.